Okay, so we have spent a fair amount of time looking at analytic functions and their properties in relation to differentiation. Right? So with this lecture, we begin our discussion of you know, integral integral properties right, of functions of a complex variable. So we will uh, first of all define you know, how to uh, define uh, the notion of a contour integral in this lecture. So we will first, first describe what a simple curve is like and how to think of integration along a path in the complex plane. That's the subject matter for this lecture. So there are two different independent variables x and y when you when you're looking at a complex variable x and y. So we have to come up with a you know a suitable notion of a path if you want to do an integration and both x and y are changing. And so how can we think of an integration of f of z dz? We have to come up with a suitable way to define what such a, an integral would be. And so the starting point for this is to define the notion of a contour. Right? So you consider some curve from a point A to some other point B in the complex plane. Right? I have sketched some, some curve. I have two different points A and B and then I can make up some arbitrary curve. Now this curve could be parameterized by some real parameter t. Right? You can in fact think of this parameter t as some time, right? as a function of time. So you start at, at time t equal to 0 or t equal to t a in this case and go up to time t b. And maybe you, you, you know, measure the time as you draw a curve of this kind. Right? So typically we are interested in curves which are which have some nice properties which we will just state up front. Right? So t and t, t b are you know, real numbers, they are the values of the real parameter at two endpoints. We assume that t will increase monotonically. It's helpful to think of t as time, that right? it keeps increasing and you know uh, both x of t and y of t are changing as a function of time. So you can think of this complex number which is made up of x and y. Both of these real parts and imaginary parts themselves are changing as a function of time and we will look at a scenario where both x of t and y of t are continuous functions of time right and so then the curve is called an arc it is convenient to think of you know this curve is a continuous sequence of these complex numbers like i just said and this arc would be called a simple arc if it does not cross itself right so we do not uh, you know consider uh, consider curves where there are lots of crisscrosses and so on are not convenient for our uh, you know, for the purpose of contour integrals, which we will look look at in some detail as we go along. So simple arcs are useful for us. And then we make this one exep exception where, you know, if your curve comes back to where it started, then it's called a simple closed curve, right? So there is just exactly one point where, you know, the z of tb is equal to z of ta, right? There are two different t's for which you get the same z that is right at the initial point and right at the end point and the, such a curve would be called a simple closed curve. So in general, every point through which your curve passes has a unique t associated with it, right? You cannot, uh, you know, you cannot find two different t's at which the, uh, this curve may reach the same point. So let's look at an example. So if you consider a you know, path like the z is equal to z naught plus r times e to the i theta and then you in fact theta is like our t here right so theta is changing from 0 and going all the way up to 2 pi it's a simple closed curve right you, and it's basically it traces out a circle whose center is z naught and whose radius is r and you start at theta equal to 0 and then you know you, you complete one circle but if you consider and it's it's the orientation is in the clockwise direction Right, because 0, it's going from 0 to 2 pi. But if you looked at z equal to z0 plus r times z to the minus i theta, and again you let theta go from 0 to 2 pi, now again you'll get a circle, but it's in the clockwise direction. Right? So on the other hand, if you consider something like z equal to z0 plus r times z to the i 2 theta, and you let it run from 0 to 2 pi theta, so then this is also a circle of radius r centered about z0 and it's, it's in the counterclockwise sense. 
but this curve manages to go around two times it loops around twice all right so i mean apparently the same type of curve means slightly different things depending upon you know the details right? so this is important to keep it in mind now an arc is called a regular arc if you know x of t and y of t are continuous and both x prime of t and y prime of t exist and they are continuous and also x squared x prime squared of t plus y prime squared of t is not equal to zero at any point of the arc right it seems like a sort of a weird requirement but actually if you pause for a moment what this simply means is you know the only way for the square of some uh, the sum of two squares to be zero is if each of them is separately zero and such a scenario is something which we don't want to allow right what would that mean if both x prime of t and y prime of t are both zero that means that you know there, there's a point at which neither x nor y is changing so in some sense your curve is moving along and then at some point it you know it just keeps on staying there for some time that's the type of scenario which you don't want to allow right so it's there's a continuity associated with it and you know x prime and of t and y prime of t both cannot be simultaneously zero at any point of this arc and then it's called a regular arc there is this smoothness associated with regular arcs which is valuable when we come up with this definition of a contour integral so we also work with contours which are piecewise regular right so there would be these sort of points where you know your curve suddenly undergoes a change and but within every segment of the path that your contour is taking you know this regularity is maintained but there, there are these in between points where uh, you know these conditions don't quite hold and still we can work with such curves as well so it is also useful to work with piecewise regular um, contours so simple closed contour is when you know z of t a is equal to z of t b so the starting point and the end point are the same closed contours are going to be very important right so we definitely need that notion so let's look at an example so if i consider the curve z is just t plus i t when you go from t going from 0 to 1 and then 2 minus t plus i you know 1 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 and 3 minus t times i 2 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 3 so this is a piecewise regular simple closed curve right it's oriented in the clockwise direction so you can convince yourself that this is actually nothing but you know you have a you know, this is a complex plane so the first part of this journey looks like this and then it comes back around and then it comes back around and so that's what this uh curve is which i have also traced here so you start from zero and you go up to this point along this 45 degree angle you you, you reach one plus i then you come back al along this direction which is parallel to the x-axis and hit the y-axis and then you come back down and it's a, so it's piecewise regular we can also work with such curves so let's define the notion of a contour integral suppose we consider this function f of z and a path so there's a contour c that is piecewise regular and it's given by z of t so we are looking at a function f of z of t and then we want to see what happens how does z change when you change t by a small amount the parameter the real parameter changes by a small amount and so there is going to be a change in delta uh, in x which we call delta x of t and change in y which is delta y of t so as you take the limit delta t becoming very small and therefore delta z also becomes very small but since we have also used this condition you know x prime squared of t plus y prime squared of t is not zero and it's a positive quantity so square root of this is not zero so what it means is this modulus of this quantity is non-zero so we we can write you know dz uh, is dx by dt dt plus i times d by by dt 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 so basically since this quantity is is non-zero so it is it's meaningful to think of this dz it's not going to become uh you know it's an infinitesimal quantity which is not itself zero right so this is 
you know, this is a, a, an important restriction to me, which we already did. I mean, introduce the notion of a regular, regular arc or regular contour. Right. I mean, of course, this is is violated at these very special points. Right. So suppose you have a piecewise uh, irregular contour at these points, it's it's violated. But we, for the moment, let's not worry about you know how how to make sense at these in between points. But in general, if you have a piecewise uh, irregular contour, you know, this is this is well defined and it works out. Right. So in some sense, it's a bit like how we play with piecewise continuous functions and in functions of a real variable. So if you have this, then f of z of t is u of x of t comma y of t plus i times v of x of t comma y of t. We are writing out the real part and the imaginary part separately. And so then we can think of this f of z of t times dz as just a multiplication of two complex numbers. f of z of t itself has a real part and an imaginary part. dz also has a real part and an imaginary part. And so you can, you can go ahead and multiply these two. And so you will get u times dx by dt minus v times dy by dt, you know, the whole thing multiplied by dt, plus i times v of t dx by dt plus u of t d by by dt, whole thing multiplied by dt. So we define this contour integral. So now we can put in this contour integral and then take this to be an integral in terms of dt, right? So we've told this is just a function of t at every point and this is just a real integral from ta to tb. And so this information about the path that you're taking is actually embedded into this, right? So because we have used, you know, this idea of how what happens to z, the small change in t gives you a, a corresponding small change in dz and that is already encoded into this. So we see that in fact this contour integral is, is a meaningful idea, right, if the, the path is, you know, has some reasonable restrictions, that's the kind of paths we will be working with. And then you have, so you have these two different integrals, one for the real part and one for the imaginary part which you can actually think of as, as two line integrals basically along these contours. So u dx minus v dy along this contour plus i times along the same contour v dx plus u dy. So basically the contour integral is, is made up of these two line integrals, one for the real part and one for the imaginary part and which one can write down in terms of the real part of the function and the imaginary part of the function. So let's look quickly at a couple of examples of how this works out. Suppose we want to compute the contour integral of z star dz along this contour which is this half right half circle z is equal to 2 times e to the i theta right so with theta going from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So z starts from minus 2 pi and goes along uh, you know this positive direction and reaches plus 2 i. So it has it's a circle of radius 2 and with origin being the center, so we see that if z is 2 times e to the i theta, dz is going to be 2 times i times e to the i theta d theta. So we have i, you know, is this integral from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, 2 times e to the i theta, the whole star we have to do. And then in place of dz, we have 2 times i times e to the i theta, I theta d theta, which is simply given by, you know, just in place of 2 times e to the i theta, I have 2 times the whole star, I have 2 times e to the minus i theta, and then I have 2i e to the i theta. So this e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta, they annihilate each other. And so we have 4 times i d theta, which is straightforward to complete. So and we, I just get 4 pi i. So we also observe that along this entire path, it's a circle. So z times z star is just mod z squared, which is 4. It's a circle of radius 2. So z times z star is 4. So in fact, I can think of z star as 4 over z. So, so I can write this as contour integral of 4 over z dz over this contour is 4 pi i or equivalently, I can say contour integral of 1 over z over this part dz is the same as pi i. Right? So this is completely equivalent to the 
result we just derived. So this is just you know half half circle. So we'll quickly point out that if you had taken the same integrand but over a slightly different path, actually quite a different path. Suppose I started from minus 2i and if I go to plus 2i along a straight line, so then I get a different answer, right? So this contour integral in general is a path dependent operation. So if I consider the straight line contour, I, I take z to be i t and it starts from minus 2 and goes all the way up to, to t. So initially it's minus 2i, finally it's plus uh, to y and z is it at, or at in between points and dz is i times dt so integral is going to be minus 2 to plus 2 it the whole star times i dt so in place of dc i write i dt and but it star is so t is, is just real so in place of i i have to put minus i then I have an i here, so minus i squared is 1, so I get t dt, but t dt is t squared over 2 plus 2 and minus 2 doesn't matter, it's an even function, so it's in fact it's 0. So thus we see that if you take this path for the same integrand from the same initial point to the same final point by but along a different path, you get a different answer, right? So we'll come back to uh, you know such path dependent nature of, uh, of this function and sometimes uh, you know there is a path uh, independence as well in certain contexts but this is something that we will discuss later. That's all for this lecture. Thank you.